Okay, welcome to chapter 10 and the final chapter. In this chapter, kind of the bells and whistles of Blender, I just wanted to quickly cover four additional things that I wasn't able to give a lot of focus on or any focus at all necessarily, just to show a couple of the other major things in Blender that can really extend someone's workflow or help incorporate their workflow into Blender. And those four things that I wanna cover is the sculpting system, the smoke simulator, the node compositing and render layer system, and then texture map baking. So kind of four completely different things, but that a lot of people will make use of. So first looking at the sculpting system, I have here a demo head sculpted from Kent, or Kent, sculpted by Kent Tremel. And if we look at this system, it's just a fairly uh, simple base mesh head that then was retopologized over an original sculpt and then has had a bunch of high frequency detail sculpted onto it. And Blender's sculpting system is very powerful because it works based on a multi-resolution system that allows you to edit the original mesh essentially at any time. Uh, you, can, you can actually modify the mesh itself without breaking the sculpt, but most importantly, uh, you can also modify the shape of the mesh for everything from posing a character to changing the proportions, anything like that. You know, a lot of the tasks that are generally much more easily done using normal poly modeling tools than sculpting tools. And so this is one of the real powers of Blender sculpting system. So here on the multi-resolution modifier here on the right side, it's essentially a subdivision surface modifier that allows us to work at multiple levels. So you can see right now we're looking at the preview level of three, if we look at our original level, it's this. So this is our original mesh. And then Kent has gone in and sculpted detail bit by bit on each one of these levels. So as we increase this, you can see all of the detail added in. And in this case, we're going all the way up to level five for a grand total of, it looks to be 253 uh, or 25 million polys right there. And it doesn't run real well on this system. This system is definitely a bit old and not very ideal for the sculpting. Uh, it certainly does not handle polys in the same well or as well as ZBrush of sorts, but as a integrated sculpting system right in the poly modeler, it works really quite well. Uh, you can sculpt by selecting your model and just go right into sculpt mode. In sculpt mode then, and also since I am also recording at the time, I'm going to just turn down the resolutions just to uh, make sure that things are running fairly nice and smooth. And again, this is a fairly old system too. Uh, but here on sculpt mode then, we have a variety of sculpting brush presets, everything from a clay brush, clay strips, a layer, inflate, pinch, polish, uh, thumb, and snake hooks. We've got a lot of different brushes available. Uh, we do have full pressure sensitivity if you're draw working with a tablet. We've got textured brushes allowing you to use any kind of textures that you may have loaded in as brushes. Our stroke system giving everything from space, airbrush, and anchored strokes. We've got the full uh, curve falloff system. A few additional options for things like locking individual axes, whether to use threaded sculpting fast navigation such that it'll lower the resolution every time you try and rotate around so that you can get much more optimized sculpt. Whether or not to show the brush, to use deform modifiers only to remove constructive ones except for multi-resolution. This is a bit of a fine case scenario, but if you're using some constructive modifiers in here, then you can set that. And then we've got a few other things, you know, like obviously symmetry, feathering, and then just some basic appearance for our actual brushes themselves. When you're sculpting, you've got a couple of hotkeys here. Uh, in, this, in the 3D view, F will allow you to change the size of your brush. Control F will rotate your brush if you're using textured brushes. Shift F will increase or decrease the strength of your brush. And then holding down Shift will alternate between what you have set here. So by, by default, brushes are set to add. If you hold down Shift, it or actually, excuse me, if you hold down control, it will inverse that. And if you hold down shift, it will just activate the smooth brush. Now, I don't want to ruin Ken's sculpt here, but one thing that I want to demo real quick beyond the actual sculpting itself is the uh, multi-resolution system. So if I decided that, you know, I wanted this guy to have a much longer neck or a much skinnier neck for whatever reason, doing that with sculpting can be a little bit challenging at times. Uh, you know, some applications handle it better than others, but 
the simplest way, you know, if you're working in with a poly mesh, that's an incredibly easy thing. You just simply select the mesh, extend it, and you're done. Uh, in sculpting system, it's not generally that easy, but in blenders, it actually is. So if we just simply go into edit mode on our model, then we can just say, select this bottom edge loop. Maybe I will turn on proportional editing right here. And then I can just pull this straight down. Maybe I'll, you know, extend this a little bit. There we go. Something like that. Maybe I'm going going for a bit more stylized character. Maybe I'll increase it along the x-axis or whatever. And then just hit tab to leave edit mode. And there we go. It all just uh, it interpolates the sculpt all the way across those and really works pretty darn well for adjusting the size, position, pose, whatever you want on your sculpt with very little uh, destructive effect. Um, you know, I can go in and adjust proportions here if I want to, you know, give him a jutting chin or something like that, where, you know, just certain things like this that are just a little easier to do with a poly mesh, then I can do that very, very quickly and easily. Or if I want to give him, say, pointed ears, then I can do that, again, just by modifying the underlying base mesh and then just have it interpolated across onto the sculpt. So this I see is, as Blender's main power in the sculpting system. Uh, the sculpting brushes and memory management, of course, are, are generally pretty adequate for most things. It doesn't compare necessarily to things like ZBrush as far as their optimization and you know really, really seamless pipeline, but it works very well for like if you want to add in free high frequency detail on a on a character model that you're working on or anything like that, then it works very nicely right within Blender.